You're not broken. You're a piece of a bigger puzzle. The life that we are living is connected to other lives. The problem is most of us connect to people who have nothing in common. And so they drag us down and dead weight will only slow you down. You have to separate from people and things and places that will keep you from developing and being connected to the things that empower you. Here's a good note to make on the battle of the mind. Don't become a victim of yourself. Also, beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. That little thief that says you're too short, you're too tall, you're too old. You've never done it before. What makes you think you can do it now? Most driven individuals, they live a life for many years and certain times without balance. You can't be the best at something and try to balance everything else around your life. There is gonna be times where things are gonna be out of balance, it just is. I just want you to remember that average is the enemy, success is your responsibility, and change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. You know, when you're on the way up, everyone roots for you because you remind them of their dreams. And when you're at the top, everyone tries to tear you down because you remind them of what they gave up on. Your ability to suffer will determine your quality of life. If you can't handle the shit life throws at you, you won't be able to accept the gifts life gives you. On the ground, everything's look big. Everything looks monstrous. Everything looks impossible to overcome. On the ground, the building can look massive. It can dwarf you. Problems are like those buildings. But when you elevate, like when you look outside the window of your airplane, everything is a small square, a puzzle. Just like the sections of our lives, we have to put them together and realize that every segment, every section, is putting together a bigger picture. Willingness to be disliked is a superpower. If you develop the willingness to be disliked, you will inevitably have the courage to do the hard things that most people are not willing to do. This will then imbue your life with a sense of meaning and importance. It will also lead to success that others will be too intimidated to go after. You must develop the ability to be disliked in order to free yourself from the prison of other people's opinions. Doesn't matter what you just did. Doesn't matter, doesn't count. The count now is zero. And that's what happens when you wake up in the morning. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter how far you ran yesterday. It doesn't matter you got a promotion yesterday. You wake up today, the count is zero. And that means it's go time. Being tired is part of the fucking game. And if you want to be a high achiever, guess what? You're going to have to acclimate yourself to being fucking tired way more than you're not tired. Here's my advice to you today. Walk away from the 97%. Don't talk like they talk. Don't act like they act. Don't go where they go. Don't specialize in what they specialize in. Throw away the blame list they cling to. Start you a new life. If there is something that you feel is good, something you want to do, something that means something to you, try to do it. Because I think you can only do your best work if you're doing what you want to do, and if you're doing it the way you think it should be done, and if you can take pride in it after you've done it, no matter what it is, you can look at it and say, I did that, and I think it's pretty damn good. Biggest regret of the dying is never becoming your ideal self. I do believe that we're thrust in a world that we don't fit in. And I believe the journey is that a lot of people sell you a bill of goods along the way. That if you get some awards, you mean something. You go to a certain school, you got it. And you swim through all that filthy swill until you come to the really, really stark conclusion 
that I want to leave this earth becoming who I know deep within I, I am supposed to be. You are worth something. You have to show us what it's like to overcome what you are going through. See, the challenge and adversity that's placed within your life isn't made for you. It's made for everybody else that you're supposed to impact. You can't have a testimony without a test. You need that testimony because that is what will fuel the message that you share with the world. Losers let it happen. Winners make it happen. Losers see thunderstorms. Winners see rainbows. Losers see icy streets, winners put on their ice skates. Losers take chances, winners make choices. It's all in the way you choose to think. Never will be able to go through life without failures. Failures make us learn, uh, failures make you stronger, pain makes you stronger. So I think all of that is good. Best way to fight the demons that chase you in the night is to stop and turn around. Turn around, face them. What you've been looking for has also been looking for you. Sometimes the greatest opportunities are disguised as a failure. They're disguised as an obstacle for you to overcome a hurdle in life. But when you overcome it, you'll become something greater than it. Now you have experience. And experience is a teacher because you've learned that your failures weren't to break you but they were to train you. Be the champion you were born to be. I'll do it or die. See, that's powerful. That could be the day that turns your life around. The world has a strange way of stepping aside when somebody says, I'll do it or die. The man says, I will climb the mountain. They've told me it's too high, it's too far, it's too rocky, it's too difficult. It's never been done before, but it's my mountain, I will climb it. Promise yourself you will never give up. Be you. Embrace being you. Embrace being different. Embrace the fact that you enjoy doing what others won't do because it's the thing that separates you. And there will never be a person on the earth that can do exactly what you do. It's been said that the graveyard is full of talents that never, ever got seen. There are abilities that the world will suffer from never having seen manifested on the face of the earth. But that's not true with you. Don't confuse movement with progress because you can run in place and not get anything done. So are you moving forward and who you're taking with you and how you made things better by the God-given talent that you all have in whatever area it may be? You can say I'm committed, but until you eliminate other options, you're not committed. A lot of people make decisions to end relationships to quit their job, but they don't become committed to the decision until they remove the other options. And then you're forced to take action on it. And I think there are two different instances. It's like, I need to change this, and then I do change it. And the making the decision is when it becomes a commitment. Again, courage does not mean you're not afraid. Courage means you're afraid, but you do it anyway. I don't negotiate with myself. That pattern of thinking is what destroys most people's lives and their dreams. You got time because you got another breath coming. And the fact that you just took one means there's another one coming. There's a purpose in your life. And the uniqueness that you bring to the table is about to open up doors of opportunity. And when someone says, what do you bring to the table? Instead of saying, I am the table, you tell them I bring the table and the chair of opportunity. And those that sit around me will find there's a difference inside of me and I make a difference inside of them. Don't allow yourself to ever become common in this common world. Not when you were born to be excellent. Not when you were born to be different. Not when you were born to change the world. And the world will say your name because you changed everything. I need you to believe the fight that you're in is worth fighting for. 
I know you've been cut. I know you've been beat up, bruised, blood, sweat, and tears, and maybe you're on all fours lying in the dirt right now. But you have to believe that it's worth getting up just one more time. Because if not now, then when? And if not you, then who? It has to be you. It has to be you. Not your mom, not your dad, not your friend, your brother, sister. It has to be you. We have to always remember our purpose will always be there. But the purpose is myself. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. On those bad days, when you think that you're alone, you just might be. Because you know why? No one else wants to f do it. So you be the m that always gets it done. My message is to keep going. Don't quit. There's something deep inside of each of us or something deep inside of you. And often when we're walking a path, an unknown path towards a goal or a desire of our heart, there's really no idea or landmark of where we're going other than it's different and it's scary and it's unique. And there's so many unknowns. And my message is keep walking, like don't quit. If you can't walk anymore, just crawl, drag yourself, do whatever you have to do, but don't quit. Learn how to handle the winters. It's a fact of life, the winters follow the fall, the harvest. Winter comes after fall, night comes after day. Difficulty follows opportunity. Recession always comes after expansion. So the winters are gonna come. The winter of sickness, the winter of disappointment, the winter of devastation, social winters, economic winters, personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long, it's simply called winter time. No one's been through what you've been through. No one's had to endure what you've had to endure. Single mother, single father, failing grades in class, still trying to be a student athlete, still trying to just make ends meet. Accepting more responsibility as an older sibling, playing the role of parent. It's not easy, but it's not supposed to be. And these challenges, these trials, these pitfalls that have brought you to your knees. It's not meant to break you, it's meant to make you. Life is rough. There are days in which you'll find yourself taking a step back. But just because you step back doesn't mean you can't move two steps forward. If you have to take a step back, you can rest assured that you have the knowledge of stepping forward because you've done it before. The step back is not a failure, it's a setup. And when you get set up, you can step up. When you've gone through something, you become something. If you wanna face greatness, you must become the face of greatness and no one becomes great without facing something. Decide every day where you're going to put your best efforts, where you're gonna focus your energy. Every single day, you must design your focus intentionally. God has a plan for you, but make no mistake, so does the adversary. And when you are not intentional with your time, intentional with your choices and your resources, when you don't drive your mind and your heart down the right path, trust me, there will be more than enough distractions to pull you off your course and away from your purpose. There's something inside you. There is something that is calling from the depths of your spirit, recognizing that you're meant for so much more. And that looks different for each of us, but we all have it and we all know it and we hear the call. And sometimes we're distracted. Sometimes life throws so many things at us that we can't hear it. But in those quiet moments and those opportunities, it's there. The one major question I got was, how do I finish where I start? I get two weeks into it, and then I stop. So this is the thing about it. I want to tell you what people don't want to tell you. Why you stop is because you're lazy. It's because you don't mind. 
getting bad grades in school. It doesn't bother you enough to be mediocre, to be average, to sit around and watch people do great things. You don't mind it. So there's your answer. Your answer is you don't care enough about yourself. When people can't get up in the morning, I'm going to tell you why. Because they can predict the feeling of everything that's going to happen in their life. And their body's resigned to the familiar. It says, oh, another mundane day. But remember when you were a kid and you were going on a field trip? What happened then? You were up and dressed and ready to go before your parents were up. Because you knew something unexpected was going to happen. That's how we should live our lives. Waking up with the understanding to expect the unexpected. And something unusual should happen in our life as a result of our efforts. Everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. The ability to dream is a blessing. The fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. But here's what you can do. You can get stronger, you can get wiser, and you can get better. The winters won't change, but you can. And that's how life changes for you. When it was hard, I used to wish it was easy. I didn't know. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. We always have choice. You always have choice. You can look at your life and recognize there's things you want to change. You can look at your life and recognize it's not where you want to be. And you can choose to be different. And that looks different for each of us. Sometimes it means just getting out of bed. Sometimes it means just getting up when you fall down. Sometimes it's these big, bold decisions. And other times, it's the small, simple things, those shifts that allow us to be great. You can also stay where you are. You can be comfortable. You cannot make that choice to be bold and to step into the unknown and to be the same way you are now. The journey is the gift. Being uncomfortable is the gift. And it doesn't get easier. We get stronger. You get stronger. My message is don't quit. Whatever you do, don't you quit. And let this come home. Your life is the exact reflection of the choices you have made. Love your life? Great, you've made awesome choices. Hate your life? I'm sorry. You've made bad choices. But the good news is, you're in control. It's time to take action. It's time to take action. It's time to get your reps in. It's time to take the center spotlight, grab the mic, and come off of mute. The time is now. No more waiting. There is something inside of you that has to go through a loss so that you can learn from it. You can't even appreciate victory until you've gone through something. I want you to win. I'm cheering for you to win. But in order to win, we must get in the fight and have setbacks so we can learn from them. Because bigger moments are coming. There are times you can feel like you're losing a battle. But if you win the war, did you really lose the battle? You have to start developing that personal self-esteem. And it, it has to be something that is an internal thing. And it has to come from a lot of hard work and dedication. You have to start callousing over that victim's mentality. You have to start building this mental armor that no matter what anybody says, that you can be in a room full of a million people and all million can be like against you and calling you names and whatever. And you like this, you know what? <laughs> Roger that, you can go f yourself, man. I know exactly where I'm going. You know how you get mentally tough? It's a lifestyle. Instead of hitting that f***ing snooze button in the f***ing morning and not making your bed and not cleaning your house, you don't hit the snooze button. You get up. You don't want to go run, you go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. 
If you want to make your bed, you make your bed. If you don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. If you don't want to study, you can study. That's how you start to callous your mind. It's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. Do something that sucks every single day of your life. That's how you grow. This is your season of comeback. It's happening for your life. This is a season where everything changes for you. Everything changes for you, but you got to claim it. You got to own it. When people look at mountains, they are majestic, they are beautiful. There are dents and hills, valleys and depths and dark spots and snow covering caps even when it's hot. There's something magnificent about them. Most will simply stare at them, but there's a few who see it as something to be conquered. As large as that mountain is, it can be conquered. There have been many that have tried and failed, people will tell you, and that you're foolish if you try. But you can't begin to go over the mountain until you first take a step towards the mountain. So you failed. Good. I hope you did. Because if you are not failing, you are not really learning everything you possibly can. If you are not pushing yourself so far that failure is an option, then you are not pushing yourself far enough. You need to fail to learn who you really are. Through challenges, adversity, and disappointment, you can rise up to become the person you were really meant to be. It's through these times in our life that we find out our real strengths and identify those areas that we need to improve. The only thing that you can do is win so big that all of them constantly compare themselves to you and then you'll forget they exist. Success is the only revenge. It's not the best revenge, it's the only one. There's no other revenge. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure, okay? Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. In every step that you take, as small as it might be, as difficult as it might get, as short as your breaths might become, you are one step closer to getting to the top of that mountain. And the same mountain that once looked so majestic, that looked so big. When you reach the top of it, you'll look down and see that everything around you now looks small. Because you're at the top of the mountain. You've gone to heights that other people won't. They say that you enter this world looking like your mother and father, and that you leave this world looking like your decisions. What kind of decisions have you made? What kind of decisions do you continue to make? Are they decisions that you can stand in front of the mirror, in front of a crowd, and own, and be proud of? Or are they decisions of regret? You are capable of achieving so much greatness. But don't let fear hold you back. Embrace courage and step out of your comfort zone. You have what it takes. Because it takes courage to chase your dreams. But you have to believe in yourself. Face your fears head on and never give up. I think people are very slow to thank and quick to blame. And one of my favorite quotes of all time is, stop worrying about what you didn't get after praying and think of all the countless blessings you have in your life without even asking. There's too many times you walk by blessings and not even realize it. Gratitude, it lays the foundation for everything good in our lives. It affects our attitude, our relationships, our prosperity, our success, our mental, physical, and emotional health, it has a huge impact that we often overlook. 
It's not happiness that brings gratitude. It's gratitude that has this effect in our lives that brings happiness. When you have a goal, you have some sort of success you want to do, start it. Be committed, not simply interested. When you are committed, you'll be amazed at how providence or God or the universe, whatever the higher power you, you believe in, moves in your favor and all kinds of things come to assist you in what you want to get done. Be committed, not interested. If somebody were to look at the face of the 85, 90 year old version of you, what kind of life would they see? Would they see adventure? Would they see opportunity? Would they see power and determination, perseverance, pride in having stuck it out despite the challenge, despite the pain? Would they see strength in your face? Or would they see a face of regret, of sadness, of yearning, wishing that there was just one more opportunity, one more chance to make it all right, but that's not gonna be you. That will not be you. You will be the one that takes the opportunity. You are going to be the one that finishes the race. You're not just gonna be great at starting, you're gonna be great at finishing. You're gonna be one who can stand in front of a crowd and stir the emotions of thousands, millions of people because that's who you are. That's the example that you set. You may have come in looking like your mother and father, and who knows, maybe they weren't even there for you, but you have the chance to change all of that. You have the chance to burn, leave a new legacy, shine so brightly that people for miles and miles can see you in the dark. We live in a world that we want to be as comfortable as we can. And we wonder why we have no growth. We, we wonder why when the smallest thing in our life gets difficult, we wonder why we cower and we run away. Our, I mean, our whole life is set up that way. Our whole life is set, set up in the, in the path of least resistance. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to feel discomfort. So the whole time we're living our lives in a very comfortable area. There's no growth in that. If you succeed in every goal you have ever set, then you are not setting the bar high enough. You are not reaching far enough. You are not pushing yourself to the limits where failure is not just an option, but a probability. I want to fail in life, but I want to fail forward. I want to learn from my failures. I want to be able to push forward through failure and move on to become the person I am supposed to be. This is the season where all those loss in the past that didn't make sense, all the setbacks, all the no's, this is the season where you get that yes where it makes sense. And then there's you. You saw the mountain and said, I don't need the strength, God, for you to move my mountain. I need the strength to climb this mountain. And when I climb it, I will have conquered it, and every level that I've gone to will be separating me from the noise below. Because the same people that were standing staring at the majestic aspect of a mountain will now look at you as majestic. What's in the mountain will now be in the man or the woman that's willing to climb. Maybe last season you were feeling down. You were feeling down on life. This is the season where everything turns around. I want you to treat it as such, and I want you to believe in that. Because belief is our strongest, is the strongest thing we can have in our soul. Without belief, nothing happens. Without belief, nothing happens. If we don't believe it, nothing will happen in our life. Nothing will change in life, so you gotta believe it. Now, I'm not talking about the mountain. I'm talking about the challenges that you must face in life. Your mountains might be something different. It's about overcoming poverty overcoming the setbacks of relationships and everything that comes along with it. But the same way that one step got you closer to climbing, it's the same path you have to take to overcoming it. None of us can change our yesterdays, but all of us can change our tomorrows. Therein lies a problem for a lot of people. We are dwelling in the past. Maybe we did something we shouldn't have. 
or maybe we didn't quite measure up to what we thought we should have. At this point in your life, you have paid for what you are. Going forward, you get to choose what you are. When we have not completed our past, it's very difficult to write our future. We must learn to complete the past by forgiving people, forgiving circumstances, and most of all, forgiving ourselves. That's who you know you are. Don't let the old story of, well, time's passed me by, my best years are behind me. That's a lie, that's false. The best life for you to live is ahead of you. That's why the windshield is so much bigger than the rear view mirror. You're supposed to look forward, look ahead at what's on the horizon for you because it's coming anyway. And when it comes, you need to be ready. The way you get ready is by making those decisions that when you're laying on your deathbed, people know they're standing in front of a champion. Be that champion. It's never neglect the little things. Never skimp on that extra effort, that additional few minutes, that soft word of praise or thanks, that delivery of the very best that you can do. It does not matter what others think. It is of prime importance, however, what you think about you. You can never do your best, which should always be your trademark. If you are cutting corners, shrink your responsibilities. You're special. Stop doing it and act like it. Never neglect the little things. Appreciate the opportunity every single day to be great. So you gotta think, man, like sometimes you go through things and you don't know the reason at first. But it's not for right now, it's to help someone later. Sometimes you're living through the toughest thing ever and you don't know why it's happening to you. But sometimes, guys, it's bigger than what you can even see right now. When all is lost, you start thinking, there's no one, and I'm not qualified. And some of you were watching people and thought, these people, have abilities that I don't. No, you have access to them. In the same way I have access to the examples that were laid out before me. I have symbols of hope. I have reminders that I come from great stock. I have reminders that my bloodline is powerful. And that even with my imperfections and my limitations, I have the potential for greatness because if it can happen in them, it can happen in me. At some point in each of our lives, you're going to have to realize that fear is probably driving many things in your life. Or it has. But at some point in your life, you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to shift. There's an opportunity in each of us to be able to overcome, to push to see something bigger than ourselves within ourselves. And often we feel maybe we can't do it ourselves. We don't know where to go or how to do it. I've never done that before. And I'm here to tell you that if you allow the shift, if you're willing to look yourself in the mirror and ask the question, if not me, then who? If not when, then where? So the question you have to ask yourself is, am I going to make a decision to live my life on purpose so that it has meaning, so the greatness that I know is inside of me, that greatness is born into the world. All you have to do is make a decision, but then you have to have the guts to take the action after you make that decision of turning your dream into your reality and face the adversities that come along with that. You have to make the decision. And in order to be able to get through the hard times 
and there will be hard times, you have to have a why that's greater than your fear. Mark Twain said, the two most important days in your life are the day that you're born and the day you find out why. See, there will come a time in your life when the stress, the overwhelm, the burdens of the world will come crashing down on you, unlike anything you've ever experienced before. In the dark, you won't be able to look around and find the light. But then you'll also discover that you weren't supposed to find the light in the darkness. You were supposed to become the light. That's why you go through what you go through. What you're experiencing is not just for you. It's for all of those other people who are going through the exact same thing. I always sat there and I was like, how do I serve? And so I dedicated myself when I said I, I had to come off of mute. I had to quit hiding behind my inabilities or my weaknesses or my disability like you have. Whatever your limitations are, whatever makes you think that you can't be that gladiator still, you still have a role. There's still things you can do. You are still a gladiator. You still have the discipline. I know you still have all these things that can happen in your mind, but I promise you what's in you is enough to power all of those that are around you. Sometimes you're living through the toughest thing ever and you don't know why it's happening to you. But sometimes, guys, it's bigger than what you can even see right now. Sometimes your son gonna be looking you in the eye and say, Dad, how do I get through this? And then what are you gonna tell him when you quit before? What are you gonna tell him when you took shortcuts? That's the point, man. There's so much stuff that's bigger than you right now that you're going through for a bigger purpose than you can even imagine. Friends' love for ourselves changes everything. Opens up a capacity for hope. Opens up for a capacity for light. And the light will always beat the darkness. The light will always win. And friends, when you realize, when you really lean into and you believe and own and live the fact that there's never gonna be another one of you, how often do we consider that? How often do we really give credit to that? You find something in your life that powers either love or hate. Because as humans, we're motivated by two primary things, the pursuit of pleasure and mitigating pain. Pain works better. So if you have a job that you hate, if you have a situation that you're ashamed of, if you have trauma in your past, use it. That's fuel. And it's the best kind of fuel. Maybe it's because there's a calling on your life that is bigger than what you see, that there is something inside of you so massive that you can live life abundantly and live it in such a way that you are an echo that reaches heaven of all of their hopes and dreams. And we can all focus on the tragedy or you can come up with a strategy. That a ship in harbor is safe but that's not what ships are for. And I can say the same thing about every single one of you and me. We're safe when we do nothing. So this is the challenge that I give you for the rest of your time here. Do not live an ordinary life. I will tell you that your greatest life is in front of you and you're not alone. The tragedy of life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy of life lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Because the things that you have gone through in life should have broken you. There is no logical reason why you are so well put together, except for the fact that every time you've been isolated, abandoned, and hurt, there is a will inside of you that refuses to give up or give in. Today is the day that you decide to apply pressure. I said there's three types of people. There's people that run from the pressure, there's people that embrace the pressure, and there's people that apply pressure. 
All right, we're not running from the pressure no more. What's pressure? We're not running from our challenges. We're not running from the things that we know we're supposed to be getting out of life. We're not doing that no more. Your dream is God's wish for the universe. best of you is yet to come. Some of you think, I'm not the man or woman that I once was. You may think that the best of you is in the past, but I'm here to tell you that the best of you is on the horizon. But you have to work toward it. You'll never have as much life experience now as you did before. You may not move as fast, you might not be as quick, but that has nothing to do with the legacy that you're going to leave behind. Accept responsibility for your life and everything in it. Your life is determined far more by your choices than it will ever be by your circumstances. Your life is an inside job. When we examine the characteristics of people living in scarcity, the way they think, the things that they do, the way they perform, the success that they have are determined by external circumstances. What's happening at the moment, obstacles in their path, they allow these external things to write their journey. On the other hand, when we look at people who are successful, the circumstances don't matter. The environment doesn't matter. What others are doing or saying to them or about them doesn't matter. Instead of being acted upon, they rewrite their own reality. But if you want to see if you're a brave person, what they call the four o'clock in the morning courage, wait when things go completely to pieces, when things are the worst, when your very best deal falls apart and your rent is late and you're tired and you're sick and everybody is mad at you and your car doesn't work, then it's the person that picks themselves up and says nothing is going to stop me. The best quality in the world that you can develop, quality is to develop the quality of being unstoppable. Develop the quality of being unstoppable. Say in yourself that no matter what life throws at me, it'll never stop me. No matter how rough it gets, I will never quit. And nothing will ever stop me. Make the decision that you can be tired, you can be worn out, but nothing is ever going to stop you. When you're on your way up, everyone roots for you because you remind them of their dreams. When you're at the top, everyone tears you down because you remind them that they gave up on them. For anyone who needs a reminder, no one is going to hate on you for doing worse than them. The fact that you have been isolated for such a long time, so many moments, so many situations, only proves that if it's you and God against the earth, somebody better help the earth. Because nothing is going to break you. In fact, whatever is coming after you, it better bring back up. I have one question for you. What's your philosophy? See, philosophy is simply a way of thought, a type of thinking, or the love for wisdom. So I'm gonna ask you again, what is your philosophy? See, your philosophy is what got you into the circumstances and situations that you are currently in. Philosophy is simply what guides your life. I truly believe that you can live in a place where excellence becomes the average of everything that you do. In order for that to be something that you accomplish, you have to be first committed to doing everything you do with the best version of yourself. Every day you show up, you have to show up knowing that today I'm going to attempt to bring the best version of myself. And on a day-to-day -day basis, that version may be different. 
on a day-to-day -day basis, you may be in a different place of who you are and how you are. Life affects us all in different ways, and every day there's something outside of us that's going to have an impact on us, some positive, some negative. So the best version I bring to today varies based on what's going on in my life. You have so much more to offer this world. The best of you is still waiting for you to tap into it, still waiting for you to dig deep. What if all of these things are available to you? You must expand your mind, widen your horizon, see where you can go. It can be done. You can be done. You can do this. I believe in you. You must believe in you though. Everyone can believe in your talents. Everyone can believe that you still have gas left in the tank, but you have to be the one that believes the best of me is yet to come. Great expression of courage is to persist in the face of adversity, but to, to persist when things really get rough, to be able to pick yourself up and pick yourself up over and over again. And believe me, if you decide to go for the goal in your life, you're gonna get knocked down over and over and over and over again. Every single week, you're going to have heartaches and disappointments and frustrations and setbacks and obstacles. But without those obstacles, no success is possible. I want to tell you, you are an eagle. And with an eagle philosophy, you have to hang around other eagles. See, it's because other eagles that's going to challenge you. Other eagles that's going to take you to higher heights. Other eagles are going to make you go and live out the potential that's on the inside of you. So when you change your culture, you change your environment, you also support the convictions that you have with the absolute truth that you base all of your philosophy upon. No man can live and be true to his own convictions unless it has a truth that's worth dying for. Get up. Get. Up. Come on. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. I know it hurts, but give me one more step. Give me one more rep. Please, just one. Let me see what you're made of, what you are truly made of. Let me see that greatness. Better yet, let the world see that greatness. Feel it come alive, feel it take over you. Let that champion out, that titan, that unstoppable, unconquerable version of you take the spotlight. That internal engine that tells you, you gotta give it more. You gotta go harder, you gotta give it with something that no one else has. You gotta go in there with grit. You don't have what somebody else has. You don't have the background, the pedigree. You don't have some of those things, so you gotta hit the switch. You gotta go in hungry. You gotta stay starving and you gotta remind yourself that there are goals that you have that are not yet accomplished. There are things that you want in life. And as a result of it, that one more rep doesn't need to be requested of you. You're gonna get that. When you place a bet on life and you place a bet on yourself to face something, to believe, that it's all gonna work out, that you're gonna figure it out, magical things happen, magical things. And I'm telling you, there is energy, there's an aliveness inside of you, a vibrancy that will come when you are willing to push through your fears. You will always eventually live the life that you choose to design. And that is the great news. No matter what experience, no matter what circumstance that you've had to go through, no matter where you are right now, you are entirely up to you. Can you imagine a life where your dreams are your compass? Just close your eyes and feel the thrill of chasing what sets your soul on fire. Your dreams are the fuel that propels you forward. They're like a beacon guiding you through life. Don't let doubt or fear hold you back. Today, take that first step and then another and then another. 
until your dreams are no longer a distant vision, but a reality. Are you going to aim up and maintain your dignity and your integrity, or are you going to take a bad situation and make it into every goddamn nightmare you can possibly imagine? Think, well, of course you have to aim up no matter what happens to you. And you think, well, that's not fair. It's like, well, it's better than the alternative. And what does fair have to do with it? You, what's your choice? You're going to dig a deeper pit? Or are you going to have some integrity in the face of life's catastrophe? You know, and, and I think we know the answer to that because when you meet people who have integrity in the face of catastrophe, you're struck with admiration for them. You'll die in heaven done absolutely nothing for someone to remember why you were here. But if you can find your sense of purpose, if you can dig deep, if you can pull out what's been left uncovered, if you can discover what's within that can make it on the outside so that others can see that it's possible, you'll become the leader of men and women. You'll become an echo chamber of positive influence and impact. You'll become a person who will be remembered beyond your lifetime for generations. You've got to become more. You have to evolve. Because when you become more, you can serve more. But until you find that gear, you'll always be in neutral. My personal question to you is, why not you? You've got the brains, you can make decisions, you can study the plan, you can change your life, you can grow immensely in the next few years, you can make your dreams come true, you can become healthy, you can become powerful, why not you? Many are called, but few are chosen. That saying is that many people have had talents and gifts that are similar to yours, and they were called to do a job, a task. They were called to make a difference. But a call is nothing more than an interview. You see, chosen is a destiny. Chosen is when you walk into what you were born for. It's when you know that this was my purpose. And when it's your purpose, you can't run from it, you can't hide from it, it calls for you. In the middle of the night when you're laying in bed and you can't find rest, is because your purpose is trying to wake you up and tell you, I have a plan, I have a mission. Being a visionary is a blessing and a curse. Because when you fall asleep, you dream of what could be. You dream of the outcomes that await on your horizon. But when you wake up, you wake up to what is. You wake up to a life that's less than what you feel you deserve. That's less than the person that you know you could be. Someone whose voice hasn't been developed yet. And what are you supposed to do about this? What are you supposed to do about this curse? The answer, you take one step in the direction of that vision that you have every night when you fall asleep. This belief in achievement centers on the fundamental idea that belief in oneself is the cornerstone of success. This powerful principle is rooted in the understanding that your mindset, your determination, and your self-confidence can often be more critical than the innate skill or talent you were born with. We rise, but we rise step by step. It's not one quantum leap, it's step by step one foot in front of the other day by day, get better every single day. And then when you look back, then you look down and you realize the mountain that you just scaled. You can't jump from the bottom of Everest to get to the top of Everest like that, it doesn't happen. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision we die, without a vision we perish, without a dream we're nothing. You don't have to feel good about it, you just have to keep going. The feeling will pass, but you will remain. You are greater than your feelings. Going to bed late and waking up early to work for a few days won't kill you. You're not going to burn out, 
you're doing what it takes. I've never regretted trying harder at anything ever. Hard times last long, but an epic story feels like a lifetime. There's an idea, there's, a, there's something stirring on the inside. Put you a notepad beside the bed and begin to write that down because the thing that is going around in your head is inspired by God and it is so that you can do something hard, difficult, challenging that the world has never seen. You were meant to be more. You were meant to take the process. You were meant to walk the path because along that path, you're going to discover the lessons that you need in order to find that voice. The lessons that you need in order to become a master craftsman. Because right now, you may have gifts, you may have tools at your disposal, but you don't know how to build, you don't know how to polish, and you don't know how to influence and impact. But the path that has been laid before you is meant to reveal that to you. Don't let society rush who you're supposed to be. This vision that you fall asleep to every single night, it's not on accident. The beautiful thing about life, and perhaps a curse as well, is that you will be given glimpses of the future you're supposed to have. That's the curse of the visionary. But the opportunity is waking up and doing something about it. It's about fostering an unwavering belief in our own capacity for success. By instilling this mindset, we can unlock the full potential, push our boundaries, and accomplish feats that might have once been thought to be unattainable. In essence, believing to achieve teaches us that success often begins with our own belief in our capabilities and our willingness to commit, drive forward, and get to where we want to go. That success often begins with our self-assured belief that we are capable of greatness. You see, your obituary and my obituary will only give highlights of when you were born and what you did as a child, or it will leave what you did in the lives of others. It will leave a story that others can tell. It's time for you to give this thing all you got. Show them what it looks like to be called. Show them what it looks like to be chosen. Show them what it looks like.